Talking About That Life podcast. I'm Coach Chris Collins. This is Coach MJ, GGT. And we're here to talk about AAU basketball, life in general, and everything in between. Um, please go ahead and get us a uh, uh, follow on Instagram. Go, go ahead, hit that subscribe, and uh, hit that bell notification on uh, YouTube. Um, we always appreciate the support for those who have been, you know, uh, listening in, tuning in, helping us out. We appreciate it a lot. Um, Mark, um, we talk about it all the time, all the texts and everything yep. we're getting right. So, yep. you know, um, uh, our videographer, Ty, he's doing a phenomenal job, too. So his, Shout out to Ty. Yeah, yeah. His, his work uh, can't be underrated enough. <laughs> so please um, – be sure to uh, hit that follow. Um, again, one small click for you means a lot for us. So, you know, let's get into the show today. Uh, we got a, our first director, our first uh, AAU director. Um, he uh, formerly was with Hot Shots. He was with uh, YBA for a while. Then he ventured off and created his own program. Um, I'll get into, you know, who he is, but um, I've known this guy before few years since what 2015 right yeah, 20, just about yeah 2015 2016 um he's obviously dealt with his fair share and ups and downs and so just like any of us but he seems to really be passionate about you know what he's doing for the kids and trying to you know not only be let's say a role model but just try to be a better man every day right fair enough to say and and uh i can definitely appreciate that and he's decided to come on the show to kind of speak his truth, uh, address any bullshit, and just make sure, you know, he gets his voice out there. And I'm all, I'm always down to support that. So, again, any trainers, coaches, AU directors, even if you hate YBA or just don't want to uh, uh, feel like you need to get your voice out, please, by all means, uh, hit me up. I'm always around. I'm always here. I'm always available. And let's sit down and talk about it. Um but uh, without further ado, let's introduce uh, TJ Little. So TJ, all right, let's get a rundown of who you are and what you're doing and the progress you've made. So uh, for him personally, he's played uh, AAU, started AAU in the seventh grade. Uh, his main team was the Oregon Magic. Um, they have a different name now, um, but that was during the time you were there, correct? Yeah. Okay. Um, he played varsity all four years in high school, uh, went uh, JC, uh, went to Siskiyou's, right? Yeah, right? yeah. Siskiyou's in Weed, California. Uh, from there, Northwest Christian, and finished out at uh, New Hope Christian. So, you know, props there and, you know, going to college because that's what we all tried to do at some point, right? Uh, right now, he is the current founder of Clutch Elite Training. He is also the founder, director, and overall does everything for his AAU club, uh, Clutch Elite AAU, correct? Correct. All right. Um, he's been training since 2015, uh, grew up in Portland and grew up uh, in Florida. Uh, now he's out here living in Sacramento, Rockland area, right, uh, making his way just like the rest of us. Uh, biggest thing I wanted to tell you first, you know, congratulations on your win uh, for your eighth grade team because I saw it myself uh, for, again, CTB. Um, Kat, that's count the buckets for people who might not know what program that is. Um, that is a, you know, they're, they're a program that has some big kids, <laughs> some very, <laughs> yeah, very yeah. oversized kids. <laughs> and, uh, and I saw, I saw the game, uh, actually funny enough, uh, TJ wasn't, um, coaching it. Uh, one of your assistant coaches or I'm assuming yeah, was, one of my parents, man, they, uh, uh, the tournament just. We had we had a conflict with the time, so I had to coach him in my sixth grade, and he volunteered to coach the eighth grade. So, nice. uh, shout out to to Tim Satello for doing that for me. All right, but good stuff. But uh, they they pulled it together. I like I said, I saw the game myself. Uh, they pulled it together. It was it was a great win. Uh, you know, if you look if you look at the eyeball test, you look at that CTB team. They shouldn't lose to anybody. And uh, Funny enough, they went 0-2. So, wow. <laughs> I think they got to get back to the drawing board and figure out what they're going to do from there. But that's really um, what it's about when it comes to these AAU weekends. It's just to play, you know, win, lose, figure it out, get better, rinse and repeat, right? Um, yeah. Man, I mean, right now, there's no there's no uh, expectations right now uh, yeah. besides get better. Exactly. And, and we're fortunate enough to have uh, – a place where these kids can still do that, especially the dealing with COVID and shutdowns and 
every single day is a new story, a new amount of cases. We don't know what's going to happen. So every every day we get an opportunity to get these kids out on the basketball court with refs and parents supporting. I'm all good with. Um, how many teams do you have in your club? Uh, right now we got we got three teams. We got a uh, sixth grade about to be seventh grade, and then we got the eighth grade about to be ninth, and got the seventeens uh, started. Um, but here soon we about to uh, add a third and fourth combo team and uh, try to try to get that going because you know some of my parents want to do that. So uh, I'm all for that. And at the end of the day, as long as it's uh, ran the right way and, and it's coached the right way, I don't really care uh, who participates or, or what how many teams we have. Good, and I'm assuming you got a lot of parent support and, you know, in terms of, like you said, you had a parent that helped out with your coaching because I'm sure you run into the same situation I do because, you know, I coach multiple teams, right? Yeah, yeah like man, you coach every team. Like, <laughs> like you, you saying you coach a couple teams, <laughs> nah, you coach everything man, in, in YBA. So that's, <laughs> that's, uh, I try, man. I just try to manage it all together. But I know, like, you know, when you have – when you have multiple teams, and Mark, this is more information for you, but yeah. if, if you have multiple teams, at some point you're going to reach conflicts. You mm -hmm. know, times are going to conflict, especially if both teams are winning. If you have two teams that are winning, three teams that are winning. I mean, the championships typically start to um, start at all the same times. So then you got to start making judgment calls. Like, okay, uh, <laughs> does this team need me more? Does this team need me more? You know what I mean? I, my rule of thumb it's like, uh, you know, the younger they are, the stupider they are. So you gotta. <laughs> so if it's my fifth grade in championship and my my sixteen in the championship, I'm probably gonna coach the fifth grade. I mean, yeah, uh, that's kind of part of it. But at the end of the day, too, like the kids, you know, what I mean, everybody's got. Without saying, everybody's got a team that they that they like a little bit more than the other team that gives them a little bit less hassle. So, you know, the kids pay attention to that too. So if you go to coach. You know your sixth grade over your eighth grade. The eighth grade, like, oh, they don't really, he don't really care about us. You know what I mean? so, but uh, it just it's hard fighting that balance. No, you're right. Uh, every a uh, lot of coaches, especially when they coach multiple teams. Uh, truth be told, we have favorite teams. We have favorite players. I know sure. I have favorite kids. I train. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, everybody got that. Yeah. <laughs> so for all the coaches and people that try to pretend like they don't, like yep. you're you're full of it. Yes, you do. Um, so. The first question I want to ask you, um, talk about your journey uh, um, from, you know, creating your AAU program and, and the experiences, you know, the ups, the downs, the, the things that people might not know. Because obviously, you know, YBA, we've been here a while, so we're kind of uh, a well-oiled machine, right, at this point because we've been doing it, doing it. You and like Montel and other guys, uh, uh, Fred from Chico, uh, Chico Avengers or Chico Tar Heels, he changes his name every week, but <laughs> he's the one. Um, no, but he's a good dude, and and he's working hard too. But you, you know, you're kind of on the uh, on the on the rookie years. You know what I mean? And you're trying to figure out how yeah, does yeah. it work. So, talk to me about that. Uh, I mean, man, honestly, uh, back in 2015 when I when I moved out here, um, I met Derek Watson, man, and, and shout out to him because he really got me started with uh, coaching and, and and working with the youth and stuff like that. So, um, but Really, when I when I when I left when I left Hot Shots and you know I, I thought I thought the grass was a little bit greener on the other side and I came over to YBA and you know what I mean and um, you know it was just a little bit a little bit different for me and not, not what I was what I was expecting you know what I mean so um, when I started my own program it was it was based on just trying to get the kids the opportunity to play and taking those kids that was you know like the eighth or ninth man on the team and putting them to be like my third or fourth best player on my team and and I think. Um, throughout my journey in basketball, it's always been about the opportunity. The opportunity is what, if you get an opportunity, you could do whatever with that opportunity. And, uh, you know, um, I think kids that are eighth or ninth men on the team, they might not get the opportunities that uh, the second or third best player gets. So um, that's what it was about. And it's been a tough journey, man. I mean, honestly, every day I get a phone call from a parent that's like, oh, how, why can't my kid start? Like, you know, or or like, what can I do to – what can I do to get on your team? Or, or, hey, I can't, I can't afford this. And when you're independent, man, it's it's tough. If a parent can't pay, it's like that's coming out your pocket. Ain't, there is no scholarship fund. There is no none of that. So, um, that's that's been one of the biggest challenges is making sure that everything is paid for and everything is um, accounted for. Um, but I mean, other than that, man, it's been a beautiful journey. Honestly, I. I Every day I wake up and I, I'm glad that I can say I'm my own boss when it comes to AAU and I could decide where I want to play and who I want to play and 
what kids I want on my team and and and, and move my own way. So, um, but one thing I would say that people don't really know is that regardless parents you might think it's not but it's important that you pay your fees yo like <laughs> like it's important because when that tournament director hits you up and you got a kid that ain't paid it's like that's coming out your pocket you know what yeah, i mean and, and, and parents right. when people would understand how much it takes to really run a program until you get into running a program so um I would say that's that's the one thing I would like parents to know is like pay your fees, yo. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, it's no different if you're if you're a trainer and you're renting a court and uh your your clients don't don't pay the uh don't pay the trainer fee. You're like, wait a minute, you know, how the hell am I pay for this court? Right. <laughs> so <Yeah. laughs> no, I get it, man. I get it. No, it's uh it sounds like you're finding out, you know, kind of what's going on and, and how it works and and the biggest word of advice I could give you, brother, is just, you know, network, talk to the right people, meet the right people. You know what I mean? Uh, knowing directors is always a bonus, right? Because they can work with your schedules. They can set yeah, things yeah. up for you. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, being aware of your competition, your you know, and just trying to uh, make sure everything is very structured. Right, that's the most important thing. Structure is always the biggest and most important thing. Yeah. So, so you know, that's just just my word of advice. So, Mark, you got anything on that? Um, no, not really. I mean, just listening to listening to him, been listening to you. Well, yeah. I don't know if I want to do the AU thing, man. <laughs> just like I said, <laughs> yeah, I, it's 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 fun though, man. Like, yeah. Like, I ain't gonna lie to you. Like, I got a day job, bro, but. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you when you wake up on Friday, because normally right now tournaments are ran on Fridays, you know what I mean? You work up on Friday and you got something to do, yo. Like, you got something to look forward to after the after you get off of work yeah, or whatever. Yeah. Um, and then the weekends, you know, with the COVID stuff right now, everything is really shut down. So being able to go out there and coach some kids on the weekends, bro, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's fun. It's fun, yeah, yo. Yeah, no, I feel you on that. If, I feel you. you should get with Chris and just test it out, you know what I mean? Yeah. Just get, just take one of his teams. He got about 30 <laughs> teams, so just take one of his teams for a weekend and just try it out. Right, right. Like it. He's, he's, he's been trying to get me on that, too. It's just it's the parent thing, you know? It's different. Then I, I guarantee by the end of the weekend, you're going to have cupcakes, all that. Yeah, right. The parents, parents going to be like, oh, we love Coach Mark. Like, we love Coach Mark. Can he coach us again? Like, he's right. you know what I mean? And then, you know, three weeks down the road, it's going to be, you're going to be getting the emails like, my kid's not playing. Huh, right, right, right. So. And that's, <laughs> and I always think that's a sensitive balance because I, I do like what you said saying, you know, uh, you do want to give the guys that might on another team be the ninth man or the tenth man, you want to give them an opportunity um, that they might not get with a certain team. And I'm, I let me make this clear in case people even want to hear it or know it. And just so I go on record saying it, I'm an advocate of kids playing for multiple teams. Um, I think two is good. I think three is pushing it. More than that, uh, it's just way too much. But I am definitely uh, an advocate of kids playing for multiple um, AAU programs because they can learn something from a different coach. They can hear different uh, voices from those coaches. Uh, it just enhances their IQ. Um, obviously, hope, assuming that the coaches are competent and doing the right type of coaching. But, you know, I'm I'm not – there are some programs and some guys, they'll probably never go out publicly and say it, but they're against kids playing for multiple programs, you know, especially their star players. They're like, man, you play for me and nobody else. I don't care. If my kid wants to hoop, go hoop. I'll, all I tell them is don't get injured. Like, if you're going to get injured, get injured in my game. So that's pretty much my overall uh, synopsis with that. Um, uh, the next thing I want to ask you is, so, you know, me and you have known each other a while. Uh, yeah. We know each other personally outside of just, you know, uh, uh, the AAU world and basketball world. You know, we've had a, some good conversations. Um, you've dealt with a little bit of stigma, reputation, right? Um, yeah, yeah. You know, and I know, like I said, from our personal conversations, and obviously I'm not going to get into detail about that, that, you know, you're, you, <laughs> you seem to want to uh, shed a lot of that off, right? Yeah, man, that's, uh, I mean, every everything that happened, you know, it, it all happened for a reason, and, and uh, I don't I don't take nothing back, but, you know, if I could go back in time and, and tell my younger self different things, I probably would, would tell them, you know what I mean, like, just look at the overall picture, like, look at the longer journey, you know what I mean, think about think about the things that you really want out of life instead of what you want right now. Mm -hmm. uh, so, 
And the re- well, then like I said, TJ for me, man. I mean, we're all human. Nobody's infallible. I have flaws. Mark has flaws. Mm-hmm. Everybody has flaws, and we all just try to do better each and every day. And I can respect anybody that's out there doing that. Is there anything uh, personally you want to address or talk about, or just I mean, you, you know, know I mean, like, um, you know, I, I feel like you know a lot of people that don't know me, you know, don't know my heart, don't know my truth. You know, what I mean, they they kind of look at me and be like, oh, there's no way he could do the things that we hear that he does. Like, you know what I mean? Like right now at my house, like I got two kids, bro, that stay with me every day, bro. Like all summer, you know what I mean? Um, <clears throat> when they do go back, they go back to Fresno. You know what I mean? I pick them up every, I think every Wednesday or Thursday or whatever. And mm-hmm. they come stay with me. They play for me. They train with me for free. You know what I mean? I know coach Mark could probably attest mm-hmm. to this. Like there's just certain kids that you just, you're like, yo, like I, I want you around me. Like, Yep. Because at the end of the day, like, I know what kind of influence I can have on you, you know what I mean? And um, I think that's something that a lot of people don't know, that my, my, my heart is big, yo. Yep. But at the end of the day, uh, I also have to be a human being, too. Like, I got I got challenges, too. I got things I got to overcome, too. But uh, for all those that people that say that, like, oh, he's untrustworthy in this, I don't owe nobody no money. I don't owe no director no money, no, no, no parent no money, no nothing, you know what I mean? Uh, all my fees are paid for and everything that I said I was going to do for my program, I've done. Um, so, you know what I mean? I, and I know p- my parents can attest to that. And um, to, to be honest, you know, with, with me being at Hot Shots, um, it was just a different thing. Like, like when I first met you, Co- uh, Chris, like I, I told you, like Hot Shots is a stepping stone to like YBA, you know what I mean? Like, right. you know, um, I had that team that you, that or some of those kids that you had, you know what I mean? Um, they was at Hot Shots with me, you know, when they started. Like and they Eli, came Matt, Jay, yeah. or Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Absolutely. So, yeah. you know, when they left, it was like a thing where it was like, dang, like, am I a bad coach? And it was, and I always looked at as I always looked at myself like, dang, like, maybe I was just a bad coach. And then I started looking at the bigger picture, which was they were just outgrowing that program. Yeah. Um, and, and, and YBA put them on a different platform. And when I left Hot Shots, um, I came over to YBA. And, and, and that, that whole situation, shout out to uh, Coach Adam, you know what I mean? He really helped me with. with uh, oh, yeah. Gotta, that's my guy. I got to give a splash, splash. to Coach Adam. Yeah. Man. He, that's really, my guy. He, really, he really helped me with coaching, yo. Like, he developed my IQ as far as understanding different schemes and different understanding how to put together a team and, and not just trying to go get the best player. Because uh, a lot of times you can get 10 good players, but then that team just not win. Um, so shout out to him for that. But when I was here, it was just a thing where, you know, um, I didn't feel like it was really my calling. You know what I mean? I felt like I was a, a better coach than, 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 than what I was getting credit for as far as, you know, the, the level of, of kids I was coaching. And, and you know, it's, that's nothing That's nothing against y'all. It's just, you know, obviously the best kids are going to go to the best, pro, the best team at that point in time and I just I felt like I could never grow and, and maybe my ambitions and, and my drive was a little bit beyond my britches you know what I mean like it was just a little bit bigger than what you know it was ready to give me so um, you know um, and just the 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 way I felt at, uh, as a as a coach just just wasn't wasn't you know I, I didn't feel right okay. so that's so I, I left but um, I mean I, I still appreciate you know, Ken and, and, and y'all give me a chance to put my coach in there on the platform and, and give me the kids that I had. And, you know, when I left, I, I t- actually, um, this is the one thing I really want people to understand. When I left, I told um, told Ken I was leaving. And I never, I never really told my parents yet. And he asked me, like, you know, are you going to tell your kids? And I'm, I'm like, nah, not really. I just, I kind of just, you know, I, I'll send out an email or whatever, you know. And uh, when I when I when I finally told him, they was like, "Oh, so are you gonna start your own thing or what you gonna do?" And I and I really was against starting my own thing. I really didn't want to do my own thing yet. I really just wanted to sit back and just watch everything unfold. And I had too many parents hit me up to for me not to. Um, so uh, I just want everybody to know that I didn't steal no kids. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I actually I actually all the parents sent sent Ken an email and just said we're not coming back and and that was their choice you know what I mean and 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 shout out to them for for allowing me to coach their kids for the last uh year and a half and that was the first team that we started um with Clutch Elite and um so so, so I just want people to know that and uh I want people to know also too that uh 
any any kid that that I coach or, or that I train, nine times out of ten, I, I've known them. Um, I've coached them before, and and um, if they go play for another program or if they started playing for another program, that's that's on them. And and I welcome that. And, and just like you said before, I, I hope kids kids play for multiple programs. But at the end of the day, um, I w- I was raised on loyalty. So if I train you for free or if, if you play for me for free, I expect you to be there. Um, so uh, I don't want nobody to, to think that um, that I'm stealing their kids or whatever. Just understand that that kid probably trains with me, and and he trains with me for free because a lot of my kids train for free. Because at the end of the day, I know that that if I was had what we have now, bro, just not even a basketball player, just a better person, you know. Like that's 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 the biggest side of it. Is we all think the bigger picture is the NBA. It's not the bigger picture is becoming a better person. Absolutely. Uh, and and basketball can teach us that. So that's what I want people to know about me as far as is is me as a person and, and me as a trainer and a coach. Um, that my heart is in it for the right reasons. Whatever you heard about me, you know, um you could you could take it with a grain of salt and just come meet me for face to face. And you know, I've I've lost the the one thing I do want to say is one of y'all friends, you know what I mean, Marcus, man, I, I, I love you, dog. Like I don't know what people told you or what people said about me to you or whatever, but uh, you know, whenever you got you got my number, you know, hit me so we could we could get that squash because uh, at the end of the day, I, I respect what you do as a trainer with these kids and in, in the Elk Grove Sheldon area. So you know, just hit me up, yo. Good. We need to make sure we tag Marcus so yeah. he hears that yeah. shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, nah, that's great, man. I'm I'm glad you I'm glad you spoke about all this, man. Um, no, nah, that's good. Um. Mark, what um, I mean, just listen before I go into my question, just listening to you and everything like that. Like, I feel like, you know, I know, of course, right now you're doing the uh, you're doing the coaching thing, the training, the and you used to be a trainer, right? You started off with the training stuff. Yeah. yeah but to yeah. me, just listening to you, you know, what I'm saying I feel like we're kind of similar in a way where, you know, even with me, like I started off training people for free. You know, like I tell, I t- I, like my wife still is on me even till this day about that, you know, which I understand, you know, it's all about feeding your family and everything like that. But I've just listening to you, I feel like you have the same philosophy as me where the kids that I trained from day one who, who I didn't charge are helping me financially now because of where they're at development wise, because just listening to you, how you're saying, you know, you're taking the, the, the kid who doesn't really play, who's like the eighth or ninth man, he's like the second or third option on your team where you're trying to find diamond in the rough, you know what I'm saying? And, and that's what I believe in too, is when you take the time and spend time with a player, you know, you're saying you got two kids that stay with you and everything like that, who be at your house. Like I'd be doing that too sometimes, but I don't do it with all the kids. You know what I'm saying? It's you can't, you, cer- can't, you can't, you can't. can't. Yeah. Cause there's certain kids that you build a bond with, or there's a relationship with, like, I don't know, even know how to explain it where when it comes to on the court, off the court, it don't matter. Everything clicks. And I feel like, you know, and that's why I don't really want to be a coach because <laughs> as a trainer, you know what I'm saying? I can, I can be real and be like, I like that kid more. That kid puts in work. That kid d- does this and all that. So listening to you, is it's, 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 it's very similar to like my process and how I think. But one of the questions I wanted to ask you is so, you know, me, you know, I'm not coaching or anything. I'm all about the skills training. How was that jump from, you know, in the beginning? Because I know how it was for me when I first started, you know, when I first moved out here from San Diego to, to Sacramento. How was that in the beginning trying to, you know, get your name out there, trying to, you know, build your name? And then at the same time, going from that to now you're, you know, doing the AAU thing. Um, man, I mean, that 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 whole journey, I, um, once again, shout out to Derek for that journey. And actually, I never wanted to train kids, to okay. be honest. Okay. Um, when I moved here in 2015, um, I just wanted to coach. And okay. I just wanted to coach just – and I always wanted to coach the best kids. Everybody yeah. always wants to coach the best kids. Yeah, so. yeah. Of course. And I started, I started with, the, with, the, with the D team. So, <laughs> <laughs> But, um, I mean, that, that journey was hard. I mean, because I went from, from coaching and uh, when I, when I like, like, like I said, when I left Hot Shots, um, just some of the kids was like, oh, coach, like, or what are you going to do? Like, I'm like, oh, I don't know. Like, and they were like, can you, can you work with my kid? And I'm like, okay, like, all right, I could teach them a little something. So then I started working with like two or three kids and then it kind of developed into like where I had kids hitting me up again and, and Ted was like, hey man, like you should just start training. So then he was like, mm-hmm. go to USA.com and get certified and do this mm-hmm. and that. So I did that and then um, that journey was, that that whole thing was kind of 
was tough because, you know, if you were trying to get good kids, you got to prove you got to prove what you got. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you got to show them that like, oh, you got the the IQ to, to get them to the next level and stuff like that. Um, but also too, trying to keep a steady clientele. And um, I don't I don't know how you do it. Mm-hmm. I don't know how like um, I don't know how you do it either, Chris. But y'all like training y'all y'all train full time. Like I can't do that. Like, <laughs> I can't train full time. Like I have a day job. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's that, that's that's, yeah. that's that's the other part too. Like yeah. I have a day job. So yeah. like when kids hit me up and be like, "Yo, can I come train?" Yeah. I don't need that money. Like yeah, I got yeah, I got yeah. a day job yeah. that feeds my family. You know what I mean? Yeah. That feeds me. So um, I could I have the luxury of training kids for free. But at the same time, like I said before. If I train you for free, that that's that loyalty and that that respect should be there. So, uh, yeah. but um, back on that, like uh, I mean, coaching is it's it's a it's a it's a challenge because you're trying to mesh ten ten different personalities together, um, and you're and you're constantly. I never really understood how much you go through with mm-hmm. parents because mm-hmm. parents can make your life tough. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, my, yeah. My, my my parents they're they're kind of I didn't really get that until like probably this year like at the fir- the very first beginning of it mm-hmm. I didn't really get no complaints but this year is like now it's like what can I do my, what can my kid do to start like why is my kid not starting like you said we were gonna go play in this tournament why are we not playing and, you know mm-hmm. it's just and it's a thing where it's like okay with quarantine and everything you really see what kids want to work yep. and uh, yep. I got I got like six kids on my team right now that I've constantly work with since the day one of quarantine mm-hmm. and then there's like four or five kids that's just like oh mm-hmm. we were we were just playing for the fun of it and mm-hmm. you as a coach you're thinking like okay yep. like as to build a team you're like okay like those kids that four or five kids that's not working like now i see what i gotta really cut off the top to mm-hmm. to get my team to the next level those six kids that's my that's my that's my bread right there yep. but yep. them other four kids i can't i can't use them yeah. i can't i can't because at the end of the day they're the grind of AAU is is different. Like you, yep. you man. I mean, if you want to get to the elite level, which is what every coach wants to get to, um, you got to have kids that's willing to put in the work. And and right now, you know, this really shows. This really shows what kids want to put in the work right now. So um, that challenge is just tough, but it's it's whatever. Now, I mean, every day is. It's different. I wish I could train every day like y'all. Like I said before. <laughs> I mean, it's it's a balance in that, brother. And and yeah. you know. You seem to be doing just fine like uh, from someone uh, looking from the outside in. You know what I mean? You seem to be managing it, you know, taking care of other people's kids, training, uh, being a director, talking to parents, uh, getting your kids into the courtside events, coaching the teams, trying to make sure they're scheduled so they don't conflict. Like literally me just saying it is exhausting. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, man, that's, that's what you it. live in. You know doing everything. I mean? You got you to gotta, because if, if you want things done right and you want people to respect you, you got to do it yourself first. Start it, start it with yourself first and then bring in other people. I don't want to bring in – you know, I always get asked people, always ask me, like, why don't you get an assistant coach? Well, it's because me as a person, I have high standards, you know what I mean, for, for somebody that I'm going to allow coach the kids that trust me mm-hmm. um, and, and the parents that trust me. You're not just going to bring in anybody. And that trying to find somebody that has the dedication and drive that you have to get these kids better and, and to love these kids the way they should be loved, it's hard. Uh, that everybody says they want to coach until you get into the to the nitty gritty of coaching, which is dealing with the parents and 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 the conflict of waking up every day and knowing that you might have to answer email. So uh, again, like I said, parents are assholes. <laughs> <laughs> Just shots fired on them because parents are assholes. But you know, you work through it, you get better, and you learn from it. Um, so what are the, with the current state of AU with COVID with everything going on? Uh, you know what? What's your observation? I mean, your overall. You look at AAU basketball. What's your overall take from it all right now? Uh, I, 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 I'm really conflicted with it because honestly, I see some of these kids getting offers like, and there ain't no AAU being played right now. No, really, no live tournaments. And I'm like, I see this kid in ninth grade. Like, okay, I see a little highlight tape. He was at an open run, and now all of a sudden, I see he got an offer from Texas. It's like <laughs> I seen that too. Like, 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 like what? That. Like. How is that happening? And then I'm, my kids are asking me, like, yo, coach, like, what tournament is they in? Like, what what, what bracket was they in? I'm like, oh, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Yeah. Like, and then, you know, um, it's hard, too, because um, I, got, I, got I got some high school kids that got some talent, you know what I mean? And, and not having 
um, not having no live events. Um, I don't mean they no D1 talent, but, you know, some NAI, you know, D2 talent. Um, and not having no tournaments right now is tough because those kids are missing out. Um, and it's it's trying to, it's a struggle trying to find um, a, a viewing service or a live stream where you can get it to a college coach or something like that. So uh, I, I wish that, you know, AAU would chime in and really say something and really set some standards on what's allowed and what's not allowed because right now it's – Everybody's kind of doing whatever. Like, I hear that. Like, uh, I think some team from SAC just went to Indiana and played, like, yeah, you know what I mean? And, 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 and I heard it was pretty good competition out there. And But then you hear that there's some team playing in New York and, you know, Wyoming and stuff like that. And, and you want to – your kids are seeing that just on social media too. So you want to – you like, you getting the questions like, Coach, can we go out there and play? Like, there's college coaches out there. And you have to sit there and tell them, like, no, that's not true. Like, no, there's no coaches. Like, it's dead period right now, yo. So yeah, yeah um, there's definitely um. But for whoever whoever found out how these kids getting offers in the eighth grade, ninth grade, you know, let me know. Shout out, <laughs> <laughs> let let me know. Hit me up because I, I I got I think I got one kid that that should be getting some offers as an eighth grader. But <laughs> Fair enough. Me. Fair enough, man. Yeah, it's it's definitely uh kind of tough the situation we're in. You know, courtside we're lucky enough is is doing their thing and they're going to continue to do their thing. Um, uh, the guy that owns the building this is his take on it he just looks at it like when i shut down i was losing money uh you know he he's took him 20 years to build what he's got and he just looked at it like the government didn't help me the federal government didn't give me a payment protection uh, loan they didn't give me the small business small business administration loan like i got no help uh, and this is from Elijah Wan, the director. He told me this came from the owner's mouth. So he said, so if I don't run, I'm going to shut down and my I'm going to lose my gym and I'm going to lose everything. If I open up, you know, the people in the public can decide and we can still run our tournaments. If the mayor or the sheriffs come and shut me down, I still lose my building. So he's like, it's a lose-lose either way. True that. Right? But at least this way I can fight to stay alive. You know what I mean? And essentially he's doing the exact same thing we're doing here at YBA. You know what I mean? Yeah, Which he's is deciding his own fate. Yeah, he's just like we gotta fight to stay alive. So I can respect it. Um so what's the what's the end game, TJ? What what four or five years from now, what what what's the plan? Four or five years from now I hope to have a, a you know a facility. Uh we we're working on that right now, matter of fact. Um so hopefully Four or five years from now, have a facility, and I still want to stay small. Like okay. I don't want to grow like YBA. Like I, I try to have like thirty teams. Like sure. I, I try to do that. It's like, a lot. <laughs> um, I still want to stay with the same, you know, three or four, three to five teams, and um, hopefully by then, like um, Clutch Elite Training will be able to sponsor Clutch Elite Basketball because I, like uh, I think I think that's big. Like if if you can get a kid uh, from inner city that can't really afford to play AAU, and you can sponsor him. Yeah. And, 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 and you know, that goes back to that loyalty thing that we talked about before. Obviously, you're not going to do that for everybody. But um, in four or five years, that's what I hope to, that's what I really hope to happen is uh, to be able to uh, have kids in the program that don't have to pay, you know, nine hundred to a thousand dollars to play um, and to, to get seen by college coaches or whatever or to just play in general. Um, <clears throat> so I, I, I think that's the end goal. And then um, I, I hope that people will, will see Clutch Elite training and Clutch Elite basketball and it'll become a recognized program in, in the Sacramento area and and hopefully in the region. But that's that's a long, that's a long, 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 long journey. Uh, <laughs> I mean, know, it's just it's 20 just, years. No, nah, hey, man, if you do this as long as you want to, right, get in what you, you know, you get out what you put in. And it's, it's a, it is literally just a daily process. It's the best way I can put it. It's every day. You know, like Will Smith said, I'm going to lay a brick mm -hmm. down as perfect as possible every mm -hmm. single day, every single day. And then eventually I'm going to end up with a wall that's perfect. You know what I mean? So, you know, just lay your bricks down every single day, man. And Go chase it. Chase it. Yeah. Chase it. Yeah. Chase it. Yeah. Chase it. We only live once. What no. else are we going to do? That's Why how not? I look at it. Why not? Like, uh, chase it. Speaking of, well, shoot, I, I was just thinking of a great quote. I just shared it on my, on my social media. Uh, Les Brown said this. He said, uh, he said uh, we were born as individuals. Typically, we're all born as individuals. We die as copies. You know mm. what I mean? And that's pretty pretty dead on Indeed. for a lot of people. You know what I mean? And it is yeah. very, very hard to keep your individuality and and move and do what you want in the right way. 
you know, without rubbing people the wrong way, without somebody judging you, looking at you. It's human nature. We judge each other. And that's okay. I, I'm actually not, I don't look at judgment as necessarily a bad thing because you grow through it. You grow through getting out of your echo chambers, right? Everybody wants to be in an echo chamber traditionally, right? We, we want to be around the people that think like us, the people that see the same things as us, the people that agree with us. That's, you know, that's an echo chamber. We always traditionally want to be that but how do you grow how do you learn how do you evolve sitting sitting in an echo chamber you don't essentially you don't and you just die as a copy of everybody else you know what i mean so i challenge any coaches any parents anybody any players out there you know get out your echo chamber get out your get out your comfort zone and learn learn uh, and and pick and choose you know what works so switching gears uh, let's talk about current events. Let's talk about what's going on. Obviously, uh, the NBA scrimmage has happened. Yes. Right? Thank that God. Was <laughs> about time for some basketball. basketball. <laughs> right. Some real basketball, yeah. at least. Yeah. yeah. No, NBA. And it looked, you know, it looked phenomenal. Uh, y'all see LeBron's beard? Yeah. <laughs> see? Yeah. Them grays is kicking in tough. Do it. I couldn't do it. When I, when I get gray's hair, I'm going to still die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that big gray patch yeah. under there. I was like, You know, man. by the time he, because you know, I know he's going to be playing until he's 40. That yeah. beard oh, is yeah. going to be white. For that real. That beard is going to be white. For real. Like Tim Duncan. Remember yeah. Tim Duncan? He's rocking yeah. like gray dreads right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. To be honest with you, he really, he really should just go bald. Oh, I know, yeah. right? Yeah. No. I don't know if y'all saw the back of his head. I oh, like, I saw I it, bro. I like, Brian, just go ball, bro. Like I, I, I'm your biggest fan, but go ball, bro. He gonna have to get the MJ going, yeah. right? There's ain't nothing wrong with it, man. Um, so millions and ain't, still ain't got no for real, for real. <laughs> Come on. I um speaking of the Lakers, obviously Mark, hey. that's your team. Hey. Um, is Lakers your team, TJ, or what's your team? I'm not really a Lakers fan. I'm more like a LeBron fan. Okay, so, okay. so you a Laker fan right now? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but if he went to the Heat tomorrow, I'd be a Heat fan again too. So, all right, fair enough. And um, uh, Ty, my man, and uh, you, yeah, yeah, there you go. He's a Laker fan too. So. I'm alone out here. I'm a Warrior fan, so I, I don't give a shit. Though. <laughs> I don't be a Warriors fan. Well, I mean, I'm from, from Oakland. Oakland. Yeah, I'm you literally know, from, I Oakland. from Oakland. <laughs> I tell you, I loved them when we sucked too. I did. True fan. True fan. <laughs> I um, but honestly, man, it's bro. I looked at that roster. I mean, top to bottom, man, that is such a tough roster. You know experience. what I mean? A lot of experience. Like, like you got guys off the bench who are who might typically start or at least be a six man somewhere else i mean you got jr smith what Deion waiters dwight howard i mean you still got guys who are giving you great minutes mm -hmm. and um watching the scrimmage i mean their 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 chemistry kuzma looks great yes nice yes. i actually yeah. wanted them to trade him <laughs> yes <laughs> i'm glad they did now man because yeah. and they can and you know they kept talking about it like this this is our future this is our yeah. franchise this is our future our future and uh, i mean and keep in mind, I mean, it is just a scrimmage, but man, did it it, it, it look good? Uh, let's let's talk a little bit about uh, Lou Williams. You know, oh yeah, he had to he had to get to the strip That's club. Tough. That's <laughs> tough. I said he was picking up food. Like, he was picking up food. Like, whatever kind of food you picking up, Lou. Like, right. The yeah, KFC wasn't good. open. <laughs> right. That's like the that's like the Jesse Smollett shit. But it didn't he said he was going to Subway. 2 a.m. like <laughs> in Chicago, like what? He like, said sandwiches. I'm pretty sure the club only served like wings. So yeah, I mean you could hit up like Buffalo Wild Wings or like Wingstop. Or My something. man said he went to a, a and I love I love on ESPN and stuff how they say gentlemen's club. Yeah, yeah. right, gentlemen. You went to a gentleman's club. Like, you want to say strip club? Right, because you know if you say strip club, it makes it worse. It's like no, he went to see some hoes. That's pretty much it. <laughs> pretty much it. They're stuck in a bubble. He was like, I want to I want to see some titties and. You know, <laughs> he did, did his thing. So I thought uh, that was hilarious. So, you know, Lou, uh, I hope everything works out for you. There might, what do you think? They're going to give him a suspension? I don't think it's a suspension. I think it's just like a quarantine. I think it's like he, he has to miss two two of the uh, the real games after mm. exhibition because he has to go through his little quarantine thing. Right, right. So that sucks. But uh, I don't know if he's going to get suspended. That's pretty much a suspension anyway. Yeah, yeah no, miss, it is. got to miss two games, yeah. and it's not by choice. That's yeah. pretty much a suspension anyway. And yeah. and I saw some on the Clippers. Uh, Pat Bev isn't there right now, too, and a couple yeah. of others. So, yeah. you but know. They, don't really, they, don't really need, they don't really need Lou right now, to be no, honest. No, like, no. I mean, these first little eight playoff or seeding games, you want to call it or whatever, they're not really that important. I thought it was going to be a little bit more important before they came out and said, oh, you know, like the NBA awards going to be decided – before the bubble, like yeah, mm -hmm. I was like, okay, LeBron gonna come back and like he gonna dominate, like right, right. you know, eight games, like 
he about to kill people eight games. Yeah, but. yeah exactly. No, I mean, it was, it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. I do like, because uh, we talked about this before, Mark, uh, mm -hmm. I do like all the safety measures they're taking. Yeah. And they're, they're, you know, they're doing a lot to take um, care. A lot to of testing. Care. I wonder if we could do that, like, hmm. for, like, if you did that for, like, just the varsity programs. What? Like, in high school. Oh, no. Like, just no. testing. Oh, like, like COVID testing? Yeah, like just once a week. I don't like know. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, how, I wonder yeah. how much it would cost like to do that. I don't know. It, it would all have to be funded by either the federal government or the state, you know. And I mean, California, we have the economy to do it, but there's so many high schools and because so many when players. You, because when you think about it, like we getting shut down because of LA. To be real with you, we getting yeah. shut down because of LA. They they account for like like sixty percent of the cases that we have. Yeah. So I mean, if, up here in Northern California, we should be able to like at least do some kind of sports true well no, they're finding ways i mean the the thing is uh talking to a few people that work for the county the reason uh kind of at least the way it was explained to me the reason sheriffs and things kind of can't shut things down because there there's no guideline without a guideline or a precedence or a law essentially courtside isn't breaking anything mm -hmm. you know there's there the, the it, let's say morally it looks bad but it's they're not legitimately breaking something because right. there's nothing in place. Right. So you can't you can't charge them for absolutely nothing there. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and shout out to Courtside because they are doing the best they can in a tough situation. So, you know, it, it, it will be interesting when high school sports start back up. And that's not till March. Yeah. Um, the other, yeah. The other thing I want to piggybacking uh, off w, duh, on the NBA, let's talk about the WNBA. I don't know if you guys saw it. I saw the highlights with um, – uh, was it the Sparks? I think it was the L.A. Sparks and someone else. Uh, they walked off during the national anthem. Ooh, and nice. Yeah, they, instead of kneeling, they walked, and both teams completely walked out, and they spoke about Breonna Taylor. Um, it's been over 130 days, mm -hmm. and her murderers are still uh, not charged. And, yes, I said murderers. Um, I don't care if they're police officers. They murdered that woman. Um, you know, how do we feel about this? Man, I mean, I saw that they all have uh, her name on their back. Every every team, every woman. So um, hopefully that makes a big enough impact. You know, I think that's powerful what they did, you know, before the national anthem, how they walked out. But at the end of the day, hopefully as the season goes on, you know, that that resonates to some of these people who, who can make make something happen when it comes to trying to arrest these cops and everything like that. Because, I mean, as long as we uh, just keep being loud, something has to happen. Absolutely. I'm hoping. I'm hoping. Yeah. So I, I, I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know why it's taking them so long to, you know, seek justice or get justice for her. Um, I mean, it's it's amazing that you see a, uh, you know, star athletes putting um, putting her on that platform and trying to get justice for her. But to be honest with you, I don't see why it's taking so long. Yeah. I mean, it was blatant murder. You know, what I mean, you don't you don't go in nobody's house and fire twenty bullets like. Hey, you're gonna claim self defense with twenty bullets? Yeah. Like, yeah. No. Nah. It's it's very sad and you know, my heart goes out to that family and I couldn't imagine what that must feel like. But, you know, uh they the family of Brianna Taylor is handling it with such grace and and you know, very level head. They're not out here just making a bunch of social media posts, cursing everybody out and acting mm -hmm. a fool. They're doing things very much the right way so you know you have a lot of people in your corner if something if this episode was ever if you guys were ever to hear this uh, uh miss taylor's family uh, just know you got some people out here in uh northern california along with the rest of the country that that are that our hearts go out to you um so let's talk about the nuggets right Ooh, yeah. yeah with their fucking <laughs> monster lineup <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you know bobo's 20 just throw that out there, <laughs> and uh, the one of their premier potential premier scores that can come off the bench and who uh, what's that boy's name? Um, the light skinned cat, Michael Jam Porter. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's yeah. the future, yeah. man. Yeah. Those two. He's twenty two. Yeah. That's I the mean, future. come on, bro. They literally said we're gonna take the Rockets formula and we're gonna put it all at seven feet. <laughs> <laughs> like Millsap, I think is six nine. Yeah. And I want to say he's the shortest guy out there. They had him at power forward. Uh, yeah, and they have, they have Bobo forward. at small yeah, forward. Exactly. And, 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 and uh, Jokic, Jokic at point, point guard, though. Like, yeah. And like, he lost, like, 
30, 40 pounds, yeah. though. You know what I mean? It's it's you insane. You ain't never seen that before besides in the Space Jam movie. Right? <laughs> I'm telling you, that's, I'm telling you, it's ridiculous. What What do we think? Do you think that's feasible? you think that's a threat to some uh, to your, to your, some of these I think teams? they're only doing that right now for the exhibition games. Okay. I don't know if you can really do that in a playoff game. Mm-hmm. I mean, at the end of the day, you know how the playoffs are. You know, you can figure somebody out. So, if you look at the Rockets, I feel like we've, Everybody's been figuring them out during the playoffs. You True. know what I'm saying? So with a lineup like that with all bigs, I mean, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I would just guard Jokic 94 feet. <laughs> Get his ass tired. For real. <laughs> I mean, in, in, in a modern day NBA, you got to shoot the three. So that, that yeah. that's going to be tough for them. That's going to be a challenge for them is not having no three-point shooters on the floor. I mean, Bobo yeah. can knock down a three every now and then. Jokic, yeah. Jokic can knock down one or two. But not having a consistent three-point yeah. shooter – and then, too, the playoffs is, a like we said before, it's a whole different beast. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, it slows down, it speeds up. And and Jokic, these do, there's dudes that have been training to be point guards for their whole life. Jokic ain't been doing that. So no. they understand how to control the tempo and pace. Yeah. And he don't understand that. So, yeah. like you said, it's just the exhibition games. When playoffs come, they're going to go back to that normal lineup. Yeah. yeah. And, we'll, and we'll see how long they can sustain it. I do like, though. And I will say this: I do like when uh, NBA teams experiment. Yeah, I'm a fan of that actually. Um, you know, uh, when the Warriors did what they did, um, mm-hmm. the first guy that changed basketball. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. The, and the first guy to really do it, even before um, Mark Jackson, if you really go back to that rebelieve team, was uh, Don Nelson. Yep. Yep. He was the yep. true small ball guy. You got to keep in mind mm-hmm. it was what Matt Barnes, Stephen Jackson, Al Harrington, uh, Monte Ellis, mm-hmm. Baron Davis. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's no. Big yeah. there, you know what I'm saying? Al right. Harrington was playing the five, exactly, and that was the true to me, the uh, antithesis or the catalyst that started the at least the idea of this small ball. could actually happen. You yeah. know what I mean? Small yeah. ball, versatile, uh, yep. versatility, skill, yep. uh, fast shots, you know, yep. bunch of shots. Like I really um, and I'm a I'm a fan of that. You know, I like when coaches experiment, especially NBA coaches, um, because again. You know, you're getting six figures a year. You can't just, you you know, you got to pick things apart. You got to think outside the box. Um, there's some defensive schemes I've taken from Steve Kerr. There's some uh, uh, offensive schemes I've taken from Greg Popovich because these guys typically um, should be the, 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 the masters of their craft. Um, of course, I look at college guys, too. Um, but, you know, there, there's some scenarios, man. I'm telling you, when there's five seconds left in the game, I'm mm-hmm. I'm recording and watching over Ooh, and over again okay. with the NBA players because they're gonna they're gonna come out with their best fucking play, yeah. and I'm like I got to steal that. I like, yeah. that. This, I like that's, it. I like that too. But you know you know the thing though, know, like uh, with the way the modern day basketball changed with Steph Curry and them it up the scores, you know what I mean? And then defense got lost. Yeah, defense yeah, got true. lost, and now like you're not really seeing like. You see games 130, 140, and that appeases to, like, you know, like the fans. But as coaches, you're like, mm-hmm. dang, bro, like, how how you, how yeah. you let the score 140? Mm-hmm. Now, granted, they are NBA basketball players, yeah. and that's the highest level of basketball. But the game changed so much from the 80s to the to the modern-day basketball that, you know, anything that you touch them is a foul. Yep. And that, that's got kids, like, playing phantom defense now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What are you telling me? Yeah, no, it's, and you're right. It trickles down. It's a trickle-down effect from the top level down. Uh Wanted to talk more about courtside and their tournaments. Um, you know, Elijah, Wan, love that you keep doing what you're doing. Uh, just some interesting news, and this is, like I said, just an interesting thing that was brought to my attention. Um, there are some places, like TJ said, doing tournaments and stuff, but they're charging upwards from 500 to to $1,000 uh, per team. You know what I mean? Uh, I really feel there's some directors out there uh, taking advantage of this pandemic. Um, there's also directors out there who hate on what's going on because uh the director for top notch tournaments um he went on his social media i think i talked yeah. to you about it before yeah. he went on his social media mm-hmm. and literally put courtside on blast and and funny enough he tried to start his tournaments at courtside hmm. and so they were like nah we're cool bro uh this was before covid mm-hmm. so he then, you know, went under the guise, of course, of you're putting kids at risk, you're hurting people, you're spreading the infection. But uh, I think it was Charles who responded right away to him on Instagram and said, dude, let's be real. If you were out here and you could run your tournaments, you'd be doing it just the same way. Because the only reason mm-hmm. he can't is because, for one, he's in the Bay mm-hmm. where the numbers are higher. And then, two, he runs his program or his tournaments out of schools. Uh, and schools are shut down. Yeah. So he has no gyms. 
right? So he said, you know, again, YBA, Courtside, Hardwood are just geographically lucky. <laughs> if you just want yeah. the pure yeah, truth. That's, that's, that's facts. We are just geographically lucky. Nobody saw anything like this coming. But if anybody actually came to visit these facilities, you would see we are literally like nowhere. It's <laughs> us and then jail. <laughs> that's literally it. It's a, it's a county jail right next to us. I mean, that's that's all that's around here. So, you know, um, uh, I I definitely appreciate what you're doing, Elijah. Uh, keep it up, man. And, um, you know, bring it. Bring your teams if you can. Be safe as you can. For parents who are against it and don't advocate for it, I totally empathize with you. I get it. You want to keep people safe. But there, it's statistically been proven this, is, this mentally hurts youth sitting in the house for months at a time like this. It stagnates their growth. It stagnates their intelligence. It stagnates, stagnates their maturity. They need to go outdoors. They need to see the world. They need the sunlight. You know, adults, we're older. We don't need that. You know what I mean? We're good. But the youth definitely need it. So people seem, to think, people seem to think that the kids don't need to play. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of kids that if they don't play basketball, they won't do nothing. Exactly. They won't do nothing. Is, and there's some athletic ass kids out here really? but instead of going to like play soccer or baseball or just go run track they'll sit in the house because ain't no basketball and then you ask them what they did all day be like oh coach i woke up at 12. Like, <laughs> you woke up at 12. like yeah. bro i've been up since five yeah. you woke up at 12. and that's right. it and, yes. and then the parents would be like well he can't go play basketball there's a park right down the street. Right. Like, exactly. like we talked about, playing outside, exactly. man. These kids, you know, they, they don't understand that. To it. They don't. They I, don't. I guarantee you ask y'all some questions about playing outside, bro. S uh, scars, the scrapes, the bruises, mm. the sun. <laughs> right. Like, you, you fall outside, you're never going to fall again. I promise <laughs> you. That, that hot concrete is going to burn your ass. Yeah. I promise you. You, 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 you definitely learn uh Shooting in the wind, <laughs> yeah. shooting in the wind. Sure. Hey, the worst rims to shoot on double rims with no net. Like, the, like if you can shoot, you gonna you gonna yeah. figure out if you a shooter. Yeah. <laughs> That's the quickest way. Yeah. So then piggyback off of that too, though. Like, Mark, do you ever have parents that hit you up and be like, "Hey, how much is it to get in the gym? Like, is there a gym where you're at that's like would like you could get in there and train, and no. they would charge you like an arm and a leg?" No, there is. There, there's a couple places. I mean, like right now, like I'm still outside. The funny thing is, I got the parents who are hitting me up talking about like. Like, is your facility open yet? I'm like, nah, we still training outside. So what? Does that mean your kid is not going to train until my gym opens up? So Pretty much. I get more of that. Like, hey, did your gym open up yet? I'm no. like, I haven't seen so-and-so in almost three months. Like, so is he not, is he working out? Is, like, so that's what I mostly get right now. Cause you know, I'm, we've been grinding outside. So um, the only reason why I asked that, cause I had a parent hit me up and was like, hey, like, you know, so-and-so only wants to train in the gym. And I'm like, okay, well it's, it's 60, <laughs> it's $60 an hour. Yeah. She's like, well, can we do 80? I'll, I'll give you 80. I'm like, no, like <laughs> I'm only making $20. Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, and, right. And on top of that, like we're going for an hour and a half because all my training sessions yeah, are an hour and a half. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not making no money. So then she's like, well, how about we do a monthly thing? I'm like, that's even more expensive. Yeah. yeah. yeah so, yeah. you know, I, I just, all the reason I ask that is because I got yeah. some kids that, that won't train unless it's wow. inside, wow. like literally inside. That and, tells me a lot already. Yeah. Right. This, right. And yeah. then, and then, but the parents will be like, Oh, you know, Jimmy wants to go play for, he wants to go play for Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> like, Good luck. Do you, do you realize that there's some dudes right. that's out there shooting on yep. the dirt? Like, yep. In Kentucky. Like, yep. like, you know, like there's a kid, there's a kid uh, that um, on Instagram that DM Nelson trained um, that's all the way to Africa, bro. Like there's no nets. Man. Like he's, he's shooting on, on, on Grinding. crates. On crates Damn. in the, in the, like literally in the dirt. Like yeah. there's no court, there's no lines on nothing. Does he Damn. have shoes on? He got shoes. Oh, okay. like, and that was the one thing that that uh, the the Dion Nilsson sent him. He sent him some clothes and stuff. So the kid got shoes. But I'm talking about like yep. these kids. We talking about like they're going to Duke. But then you see that kid on Instagram that's like mm -hmm. grinding like that yep. every day. Yep. And even with your kids, Mark, I see mm -hmm. your kids grinding every day. So, mm -hmm. but then you got kids that's grind like two three days a week. But they yeah. talking about like I'm about to be a varsity starter. Yeah, no, I right. ain't gonna cut it. Like, I ain't gonna cut what, it. You going to D six? Yeah, yeah. yeah. you going to D six? Yeah. Pretty much. Or yeah. are you going to a, a private yeah. school where you know what I mean like like a John Adams or something like that? Yeah, yeah go there. You, you, you be average forty five a game. Right? Yeah. yeah. Well, him. it's funny because like you said, you know, with with, with I know football starting in January. This is for CIF and mm -hmm. basketball's not starting until March. Like I said, this is this is gonna be the true test. Once <laughs> March come around, you know what I'm saying? There's gonna be the people who, okay, I'm gonna start working out around January, February, you know. 
season about to start in March. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There's going to be people like that. Yeah. And then, of course, we still got some of the... pounds of fat. Yeah, there, yeah, right, yeah. So. yeah. And then you got the people, like I said, who are, you know, two to three times a week till March. And then, like I said, you got the ones who are working like season about to start tomorrow. So when March do come around, they already D1 level or are ready to go off to college and get a scholarship <laughs> where all the other kids are still trying to catch up. So for anybody listening, you know what I'm saying? Keep working now. Work, work now. And, I know everybody's going that. That was the other thing too. Like you ain't never seen nothing like this ever before, where nope. you've gotten an off season of like nine yes. months, nine yes. months, yes. and then on top of that, like yes. you get to play high school and AAU at the same time, yeah. potentially. Yeah. So yeah. that's that's the yep. that's that's unprecedented yeah. to, to get something like that and I, to see some kids like not working, yeah. even even though that like you can't work in person with your trainer sometimes, mm -hmm. maybe in certain mm -hmm. areas. But bro, there's there's so many people out here mm -hmm. on Instagram, yep. YouTube that you can work with. Yeah, like, yeah. These there's kids, resources. These, there's no excuses not to, not to be great or not to be grinding to get yeah. great. Like, yeah. too many kids ask to be great. Like, yeah. you got to work for that. Like, it's true. You and, know what I mean, and an AAU is extending. You know that yep. that's the reality of it. AAU is extending. Uh, it'll probably go until February. You know, and and what we mean by AAU is there's going to be tournaments where there are tournaments. There's going to be practices when they can practice. I mean. Um, you have distance learning going on because of distance learning. Uh, uh, just for anybody who's listening, YBA is turning basically into a school. You know what I mean? We're going to, uh, during the day, we're basically going to turn uh, the facility into like a PE class slash tutoring place slash, you know, uh, get your homework done, get your studies done, also a slash daycare. You know what I mean? So everybody has to adapt. That's what we're turning our facility into to try to adjust and deal with, uh, deal with these times because – uh, everything's uncertain and and we got rent to pay for, to keep the lights on and and you know i want them i would like kids to keep getting better i would like to keep seeing them grow and you both said it and hit the nail on the head like there's no excuse there's just no excuse anymore i i can't take it there's no excuse if because you can't get into an air-conditioned gym well, uh, <laughs> I mean, there was people hooping before air conditioned gym. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you figure it out. Right. As Ted would say, figure it out. The one <laughs> thing I want to ask you, though, Chris, because mm -hmm. like we talked about, uh, you know, with AAU and, and high school basketball at the same time is what you going to do, man? Because you coach, you coach at Whitney and, and you coach at AAU. So <laughs> um, what you going to advise oh, your kids man. to do? What, well, what you going to advise when, them to do? Well, when I shut <laughs> down and I got to focus on Whitney, um, I'm going to hope my kids are well more than likely they'll still train because i can still train uh and find that balance um they most of them are talented enough to play for multiple programs or even other yba teams so i'll encourage them to play for other teams until uh we can get moving because my formula is going to be pretty simple um i want to have one day of practice and one day of team training that's pretty much what I'm going to do. Um, but, not, I'm, but I'm saying like when the high school season starts, because, you mm -hmm. know, like it's going to start in, in uh, I March, like March, right? February, so, February 22nd. Right. So, so then they're going to have AAU tournaments going on during that mm -hmm. time. Oh, you're so, talking about high school? Yeah. Like during uh, high school yeah. AAU tournaments? So uh, what are you going to advise your kids to do? Like, are you are you going to be I'm that gonna coach that's going to be like, it hey, depends. we're going out of town to L.A.? So like, It depends. I mean, if, if it's a showcase, yeah, I say go to the showcase. If uh, one of my kids is on a circuit, yeah, I say go to the circuit on the weekend, you know, don't get hurt, come back, and, you know, be ready to go. Because the reality is high school games typically fall on a Tuesday, Thursday, or a Tuesday, Friday, or Wednesday, Friday. So so you're going to choose to coach high school or you're going to choose to coach AAU? Oh, for me, I'll do both. <laughs> I know I can manage both typically uh, pretty good. Um, worst case scenario, um, uh, high school is always a priority. Uh, so uh, if, you know, my kids ultimately are talented enough, good enough, you know, they don't need me to be at the showcase to showcase their talents. The biggest reason they need me at the showcase is because I network. I network so much uh, with everybody else because I'm a JC a coach. You know, I'm a JS. So when I take off the YBA polo, I throw on the American River polo, and I can sit next to these college coaches and have conversations with them and advocate for my kids. That's the only point where I would say they're missing. But because – I'm now uh, the regional, you know, director or whatever, or well, like the regional basketball director for that dream scouting program. Mm -hmm. um, they're working with me and what I basically essentially do, getting these coaches in touch with the kids, they're, get, they're expanding their network into me and my network into them. So I don't necessarily have to be there to get those looks. 
So that's, I mean, that's overall what I'm going to do. But high school is going to be a priority. It always has to be. And it's going to be a shorter season anyway. So, mm-hmm. you know, I, I like the atmosphere of high school. I, me personally, I like the challenge of coaching high school. You know, AAUs are, AAU teams are all-star teams. Let's just call it what it is. They're essentially all-star teams. You get the best kids um, typically around, and you play other kids that are the best kids from where they're around. And, you know, m- uh, may the winner win, right? Um, high school is very strategic. You have to work with kids who might like basketball you have to work with kids who might have one particular skill set and you have to work and adjust around it I mean you know I'm at Whitney it's not like I'm getting you know Sheldon level talent you know what I mean like I have to figure it out and manage and my JV last year went uh 21 and 7 Ooh, so you okay. know we had to I had to figure it out I had yeah, some kids so, who have literally no left hand and that's that's why I was getting to that is like you know, AAU is like a lot of kids gonna be like, "Oh, I'd rather just play AAU than play high school." Yeah. And, and what I what I would tell kids is is there's nothing like high school. Like when you when you don't play high school, you look back on it and you be like, "Man, I play AAU." Nah, high school is is like you said, it's a different challenge. Like you going against, you're not on a team where you got your buddies, yeah. your best friends, and and and. and Y'all been went to Dallas and y'all played against this team and that team. Nah, some of these kids don't yeah. ain't never played before. Yeah. And and especially at small schools, they just happen to be tall. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and you're like, it's well, true. you're six five randomly. So and before, before tryouts, you're like, oh man, we got a really good team. We got a six five kid. He go to tryouts, he can't catch the ball. Exactly, and <laughs> he still he still got a jersey though. It, right, he's, he's starting. He's starting. <laughs> exactly. Um, uh, well, the next thing I wanted to mention, uh, well, especially while I was thinking about it, is, uh, you know, happy birthday, Mark. Oh, hey, thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah, birthday I, was I yesterday. Heard, I heard you Appreciate 33, it. man, 33. Yeah, man, I'm 33. You're old, man. I'm, so is that considered OG, right? Yeah, uh, you getting close. Okay, okay. But I don't know, you're part Asian, so you get like, <laughs> you get like magically uh, old and shit, you know. You probably go, you're going to live to be 120. <laughs> I'll take shit. that. I'll you ever look that. back on it and be like, man, I remember I used to call people that was older than me old. Yo, yeah, yeah. It's funny because, like I said, the way my kids talk to me is like. Real old, bro. What the I hell? Know. It's what hella disrespectful because yeah. in your mind, you like, gosh, damn, I wish I could get my 22-year-old body. Yeah. 25-year-old body. And yeah. It's yeah. funny how these kids, you. these kids want to challenge you when you turn when you turn exactly. Yeah. exactly. And then they want to start talking, but right. like you remember, like exactly. when you was twelve, bro, you couldn't do no crossover. I would have killed yeah. you. Like, yeah. yeah, when I was twelve, my twelve versus your twelve, yeah. I would have killed you. Oh, that's true. <laughs> Very true. Well, I appreciate that though. Thank no you. No worries, man. Thank Just you, wanted man. to give you that. And then um, the the other thing was, I thought that was pretty funny. This is kind of a funny thing that I was noticing at, uh, with courtside and the tournaments going on. Uh, a lot of teams are going under aliases. Because they don't want to necessarily get caught up, um, uh, we're guilty of it as well. Uh, we go, we we go team Collins, team whatever. Like we don't we don't say YBA, mm-hmm. um, PHPS. I think they they went under like superhero names, and I think uh, 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 other Toon teams. Squad, actually, yeah, Toon, Toon Squad. Squad. Like yeah. hey, hey, actually, I, I, shout out to them because they they got a good team. They got a good what, team. PHPS. Oh yeah, yeah they got yeah, a good yeah, team for sure. They do. They do. Um, some of the kids actually uh, on, on that team. I know uh, a couple of them played for me too, and no, they are. I was actually talking to uh, trail about because his son's on that on one of their top teams i wanted yeah, my 16 I didn't, I didn't even team. Know that. yeah i wanted my 16 u team to play their 16 u team because i think that'd be one hell of a good game you know what i mean so you know phps i'm sure if someone from there listens uh we'll play each other soon <laughs> we'll play each other soon because i love i love good competition i love good games uh the next thing i want to do uh I wanted to talk about um, kind of a new segment. Uh, I wanted to give uh, uh, what I want to call coach love, man. Like um, I want to give shout outs to coaches out there that I think are, are in, that I watch that I think are doing the right things, working hard, um, really just in it for the right reason. Uh, uh, TJ, obviously you're here. I think, I think you're doing a phenomenal job with your program. Um, I, you, saw, I saw, I uh, saw Lee this weekend. Lee was out here. Uh, uh, this is a cat we used to hoop, uh, hoop with all the time. Mark uh, mm-hmm. Lee's like, OG Lee, you know what I okay. mean? He's loud as hell and <laughs> and wanted to fight all the time and every. I mean, if you knew this, he was yeah. think of the angriest guy you could think of in times about ten. <laughs> and that and that, and that was Lee. Damn. You know, quick he'd be quick to fight somebody in a second. But um, he came out here this weekend. He has a team from Galt. He he coaches the high school in Galt, which is like nowhere. <laughs> and is that NorCal? Uh, yeah, it's out here. Uh, oh, it's okay. it's um 
It's uh, about a, two hours away from like where we're at right now, but it's mm-hmm. this very, very small population, very small area. That's what everywhere. Yeah. That's what everywhere outside of Sac. Yeah, like, pretty I've been, much. I've been in Sac for five years, and I still don't know where gold is. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and uh, he brought his team out here. Um, he even had like some eighth graders, some freshmen, juniors, uh, seniors, and played them up in 17U. Um, they got destroyed. Uh, the first game they lost by 40. Second game they lost by 50. Damn. And uh, – and he was still positive though. That was, that's why I had to give him a lot what, of credit. What is that? Uh, okay. I, it's his high school team. I don't know what the, the oh, okay, name. Okay, I okay. think he called it. Uh, crap, I can't remember the name. It was some funny ass <laughs> name too. I can't remember for the life of me. But I definitely wanted to give uh, uh, Lee some love, man, because um, it is very hard in the face of adversity to stay positive and keep coaching, especially when you're getting destroyed by forty or thirty and have fifty. You, have you ever got beat by fifty? Yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. I, I know people think it doesn't happen, but trust me, bro, <laughs> my team's Mark, getting... have you ever been by 50 in your life? Like, uh, and, myself? Like, like 50? your team? No, no, not 50. I've been blown out by, like, 35 in my playing days. Not right, when I was in high school, we lost 106 to 38. No, Ooh. you did it. Oh, to my Garrett God. Sims' team. Garrett Damn. Sims, you went to Oregon. Um, that Bro, they had an all-star team, bro. Wow. Like, I'm talking about, like, they... We couldn't get the ball past half court. Wow. <laughs> like I'm talking about a varsity team that wow. get the ball past half court. Damn. But, like what, my what grade age, were you in, bro? I think I was a, I was a junior, no sophomore year. Wow. So the, so it was a sophomore year, but we had like no excuses, but we had like six freshmen on our team. <laughs> but still, like yeah, bro, yeah, like yeah, every yeah. like literally the first half they probably had like thirty dunks oh, in the first half because. He was like six four, bro, and I'm talking yeah. about like they just throw it up to him. He go get it, <laughs> and I'm, I'm I'm sitting I'm sitting on the side because at that time I had hurt my foot. I'm sitting on yeah. the side and I'm like, dang, bro, like, is this what the season gonna be like? Man. Like, is everybody like this, bro? And I thought I was D one in this. Season. That's <laughs> <good>. I'm like, <laughs> like, yo, like, I there's mean, nothing we can do. There's certain things you see like that. Now, um, uh, I was lucky enough. Well, you know, my my AU program was the Oakland Rebels, so. I, I was lucky enough. Uh, most of our games were wins. Uh, this was before the Oakland Soldiers were even a thing. So the Oakland Rebels were keen, and we, you know, we we dominated. But um, I could, and my high school team was really good. That was that Oakland Tech team with okay. Leon Poe and all those guys. So we were really really good. But I can remember middle school games and elementary school games, bro. We got smacked a few times, and you just. You know, you deal with it, keep going, yeah. go you from there. You don't even know what to tell your friends after the game, right? Like, especially, <laughs> especially like I know because we all we all do. So like when you in high school, girls from other schools, yeah. you like, oh yeah, she looked good like before the game, <laughs> and then once you get smacked, you like, oh she don't look so good, right? Now. Right? <laughs> she don't look so good now. You, you just tell people I showed up. <laughs> yeah, <right? laughs> I was and, there. And when your AAU team get blown out by fifty, like when you coaching, because I got blew out by fifty by the uh, by the. Um, San Francisco uh, soldiers, mm. like they blew yeah. us out by. They beat us eighty-seven to seventeen. Damn. Like they, they, they smacked Ouch. us. Ouch. And when you getting beat by that much, you can't do that. But sit down. Yeah. Like all you do is sit down. And when the kid come out the court, and you see that look in his face, like I'm scared. <laughs> like you just like, oh dang, like my bad, bro. Like oh, man. that's I that. That's when the huddle beat us. I didn't know what, I, didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> that's what, that's what, that's gonna, what. You can't even tell. Like we're gonna work on our offense because you can't even get the ball up the court. So you can't work on the offense. <laughs> He's like, oh, just go out there and get some exercise. Man, <laughs> just stay positive. The other program I wanted to uh, uh, give some coach some love to was uh, City Hot Shots. Um, I don't, I cannot remember the guy's name. He's always real respectful to me, too. Uh, white cat, but he's really cool. Um, I think he does a phenomenal job. Win or lose, he's always coaching. He's always saying the right thing. So, you know, for the coach for City Hot Shots, I wanted to uh, definitely uh, show you some respect. I think uh, he coached with, uh, over at Touch Shooting, too. He coached at 12U. I think so, yeah. He coached at 12U program, mm-hmm. too. Yeah, right. Yep, mm-hmm. He absolutely does. And like I said, he's always real respectful, really cool. Seems to really uh, uh, want to teach the kids the right game. I, I, two of my kids play for him, uh, Luca and Matt. And um, I, I think he just does a great job. So, I, you know, I, I like watching – as much as I see a bunch of coaches, I, I definitely like watching the coaches that, you know, show high IQ, high character, do the right thing. So – I figured what better place than on our show to, you know, show them some love if they happen to hear it. Um, so respectfully disrespectful, right? Let's let's talk about a couple of tough topics. Um, can kids be overtrained? You know what I mean? Can there, can there be too many voices? Because we're all trainers here. We all have that lens. So I thought that was a pretty relevant conversation. Can, can there be too many voices, um, you know, influence a kid in terms of the training? Um, what do you guys think? Uh, 
Uh, for me, uh, I mean, I always look at it like the more trainers, the better. Mm-hmm. As long as um, you know qualified trainers, or, or, or not even qualified, because I don't, I don't think there's any qualification to become a trainer. But I think you know, what I mean, when you see you see the product that people put out, then you're like, okay, he knows what he's doing. Like I see them take that kid from from ground level to now, and you're like, okay, yeah, I can trust, I can trust one of my kids to go over there. And uh, with that being said, like I think one of y'all got, you know, YBA got Evans, man. Like that's my guy. Like mm-hmm. I don't, I don't care what nobody say. Like whatever people say about us and our relationship, whatever, that's my guy. Like uh, he's one of the dudes that I, I recommend people to. Like when I didn't have no gym, and like I said, the little Jimmy wanted to come inside. I knew YBA was running, so I'm like, okay, like go train with him. Like that's my guy, and I tell him like, hey, I got so and so coming over to you. Like don't be easy. Like you know what I mean? Don't like. Don't think that you got to do me a favor by by charging them less or whatever, but you know what I mean. So um, I think if you respect the people that you're recommending, or you respect that the people that the kids are going to train with, then that's good. Um, but I still think that kids should have a house trainer, and and, and that house trainer be their main trainer. I think that goes with NBA, college, high school, mm-hmm. wherever you go. I think there's guys that go train with Chris Johnson and then but they mm-hmm. real trainers feel handy. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like that's that's their that's their trainer or maybe that's the team trainer or whatever. So um as long as you're getting good work, then it's cool. But if, if you're going out there and he's just putting you through drills and not really explaining or not really explaining to you why you're doing that or you don't you're not getting any IQ growth out of it, then mm-hmm. I, I suggest your parents um train the trainer. It's not a good fit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just not what about you, Mark? Um I believe I was listening to Tim Grover the other day. He was talking about, you know, when he was working with Kobe, you know, you know, Tim Grover trained with Jordan, Dwayne Wade, you know, and he was working with Kobe. He said that there was a time span when he was working with Kobe where when Kobe hit him up, he wanted to have full control of what Kobe was doing. So not necessarily that. Kobe was only going to him because he knew that course. There's a lot of people who's working with Kobe, you know what I'm saying? He wanted to know what the strength and conditioning guy was doing, what the, you know, what the stretcher was doing, the guy who gets his jumpers. He needed to know what they were doing so then he can to, so he can adapt to that. You know what I'm saying? Cause at the end of the day, Kobe reached out to him, you know, and I believe, you know, as a trainer, you know, I'm not, I don't mind when my players work with other people, you know what I'm saying? But in my mindset, I believe, you know, the work speaks for itself. If, if a kid is going to consistently work with you, you know what I'm saying? And find ways to work with you, then there's a reason. If the kid has to bounce around, then they're still trying to find themselves. You know, and that's why I believe in with what I do, you know what I'm saying, is if you can really just focus on the kid and 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 and, and really influence them and try to try to leave your fingerprints with them, I believe that's gonna there's gonna sh- they're gonna have more success, right? Especially if the trainer knows what they're talking about, because I believe if if he goes to another trainer or another strength and conditioning or whatever and they're telling them something different where we just been talking about that for almost a month and a half and now you're changing it up and now you have to go through because there's always a transition period where if I got to work with a kid, I got to change a shot or if I got to tell him like, hey, man, that's not your game. I think the best way for you to be impactful is to be this kind of way. And then he works with somebody else who, you know, he might have a lot of respect for, but then it's like there's always going to be some kind of imbalance, some kind of inconsistency. I believe if you're able to stick with one or two people and if the other person has the same game plan as you. You know what I'm saying? If you guys are able to work together, I truly believe that's how you really develop talent. You know what I'm saying? If you're able to do that, because you like, like, like you were saying, you know, a lot of players work, especially at the NBA level. Oh, you'll see that. Oh, so and so is working with with that trainer and that trainer. But at the end of the day, there's this one trainer that they always like. A lot of people go to Chris Brickley, but yet, if you really notice, you know what I'm saying? Some of the top players, you don't have to see it on camera. You know what I'm saying? They're with them behind the scenes all the time because there's it's more than just the drills. You know what I'm saying? It's the conversations, it's the relationships, you know what I'm saying? So so that's what I believe in is, you know, if you can keep it at least maybe three people who are kind of helping you out, I think that that's fine. Too many is that's that's too many influences, you know what I'm saying, to to be in your ear uh to to try to really help you grow. So that's what I kind of believe. And and just so I'm so I understand correctly. You think like communication amongst trainers is is a key. Yes, yes, to yes. bridge yeah, that gap, yeah, right? Going, like with Bracy, with Bracy, with how you say that's not uh, going to happen. That's not going to happen. That's bro. a strong statement. You think that's trainers not, can't communicate with each other? No, no. There's no <laughs> way because at the end of the day, um, 
it's a money game. It's mm. a, it's a money game. Like you know, what I mean, like and like why I say that is because y'all know, like at the end of the day, y'all got to pay your bills. True. So, yeah. um, a lot. Somebody once told me like McDonald's is not going to train Burger King, you know, employees and send them back to McDonald's. You know, what I mean, like so I'm not going to train a kid for you. And then send them back to you when I know I can make consistently make that money. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's 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 a lot of trainers perspective. So but for me, it's a little bit different because, like I said, I have a day job. So if a kid don't want to train with me, all right, mm -hmm. I'm not I'm not going to lose no sleep. I might not be able to get them pair of Georgians that mm -hmm. I want, mm -hmm. but I guarantee I'm going to still have cable or have lights and food <laughs> on my table. Well, yeah. I guess like, you it, know what I mean. So then it comes down <laughs> to the motivation of the trainer then, correct? Yeah, but because but it, but but do you see that motivation from from do you see it though as a parent? A parents don't always see what your motivation is just because they see they might see that you work with the top level top level talent in Sacramento, right? But then you get lower level talent and they they just drop Billy off. They don't see that you sit Billy in the corner and just have him do handle drills. Yeah, you know what I mean. Well, and cause and, it, and that's why I feel like the work speaks for itself depending on how the kid develops. Right. Because my example is, you know, with Bracey, mm -hmm. you know, we have, you know, I've been working with MJ, but Bracey also, you know, of course he's yeah, a U coach, with him, but yeah. he works with, 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 with MJ as well. But we communicate, you know, he'll, yeah. he'll let me know, like, all right, so, you know, MJ's going to be with me a couple of days this week. You know what I'm saying? So what kind of stuff have you guys been working on or whatever? You know, so I let him know, but at the end of the day, it's like, you know, for, for MJ, he knows that he's getting better when he comes to me and when he goes to Bracey. You know that's because but, of the relationship. But do y'all have a relationship outside of outside of just the training, though? Yeah, I'm pretty cool with Bracey. We're so pretty, you, you know, go. what I'm saying we we have a, you know, he's like I said when I first moved out, and a lot of trainers won't do this, and and I know of course I know you have your stuff with Marcus. Like when I first moved out here from San Diego, Marcus was one of the first ones that you know approached me, and you know, and one of the things he's still he's always still been the same kind of annoying and kind of <laughs> just always trying to be competitive and try to but i like that you know right, to me that right. motivates me you know what i'm saying course. and then with bracy you know you know because i live in in dixon solano county area he's also reached out to me where i know that a lot of trainers won't reach out to other trainers true you know what i'm saying to be like hey man i want to help you out da, 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 this and that so for, for for marcus to do that for bracy to do that you know like i feel like that kind of that helped with everything else when it comes to just, you know, working with other players and, 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 and me being comfortable. So, but I know what you mean. Cause there are trainers, you know, where, like I said, I've, I've, I've felt certain hate, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and for like, I haven't been talked to you. I haven't been, I told you about the story about the whole yeah, t-shirt thing. Real. It's you real. know what I'm saying? So, so, but so it, yeah. It depends on the motivation. And again, yeah. you know, what's their end game. Uh, there's definitely uh clout chasing but trainers that, that's, that's, a, why, that's, that's a very real thing that's a you know mm -hmm. they want they want the social media views they want the video mm -hmm. with the kid uh they might train the kid once or twice <laughs> i mean and you know they talk about look i made this guy or i made yeah. this you know and and that it goes back to kind of what ted said and what i firmly believe you have to be okay with letting go you have to when a kid that I've trained and worked with and, and coached for years is now about to play for West Coast Elite or the Oakland Soldiers or Team Lillard. I have to intrinsically be okay with that. I have to come up with, you know, the, the emotional fortitude to say, you know what, it's okay because he's progressing and that's ultimately the end game. If you're progressing, you're happy. I'm going to help the next generation and rinse and repeat. You know what I mean? So, but it, but it is an interesting dichotomy. The train there, there's ref, you know, there's a, there, there's subsections of this whole basketball community. There's the ref community. There's the coaching community. There's the training community. There's the player community, you know, the parent community. It is these weird sub uh, communities within this basketball community. And some absolutely have the right motivations and, and the, the right heart in in these areas and some you know they're they're very corrupt and they just want money and they just want to take advantage and they just want to sell this esoteric dream of your kid's going to go to the league if they're with me if they're if they get this many views and this many videos um i made that happen you know and and it's some type of weird vicarious way to live through another person's success um that just goes back to the human condition you got good people and you got bad people you know mm -hmm. what i mean and and there's going to be different people that find ways to make it work um 
What's so funny about that is people don't even people don't realize that though. Like people on social media, they don't know that though. Mm-hmm. They don't, they don't know that 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 kid don't don't train. With but him social all the media time. can portray you in so many different ways. You know that, man. I mean, there's literally mm-hmm. people have a living. It's so <laughs> funny to me. Social media influencers. That is an actual job now. You know what I mean? Like, and Photoshop, and I mean, women can make themselves look any way they type <laughs> type of way they want. So trust me, trainers and coaches can make themselves look any type of way they want. Mm-hmm. I really think it is very difficult in this day and age to be very transparent. Um, I do believe everybody's entitled to a personal life. Now that's something totally different. Everyone, every fucking person is entitled to uh, privacy and a personal life. But if you're going to talk in the midst of a public occupation, which like coaching, training and things are, it is hard to be really like transparent because most people, again, everything has filters, right? Instagram has filters. Snapchat has filters. We're very good at filtering our life. We don't know how to sit there and strip away all the filters and say, this is who I am. I'm human. I messed up on this. I did this right. I did this wrong. And most of the things we put out there, and like I said, I'm guilty of it too, unless every now and then I put something in my stories. But, you know, most of the things I put out there is positive. And that's on purpose. That's not on accident. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think we need a lot of positive, uh, especially in this day and age we're living in. But again, there, there, there's, you know, true, uh, true positivity and there's, you know, false positivity. You know what I mean? And you, you just go through this minefield of figuring out who's who. You know what I mean? We, we've done this all long enough. We know a lot of these people behind the scenes enough. Mark, you're kind of learning it. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know who, who's for you and who's not. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And you just you just keep progressing from there. Um, going to the next thing. I uh, want to talk about. Uh, uh, no. Yeah, you know, that it's that time. <laughs> With, uh, so this goes out to you, Robinson and Team Touch. Uh, I received a video uh, from someone from uh, Matt Barnes Elite. Uh, you guys took a tough loss uh buzzer buzzer beater they won the overall tournament let me make that clear let me pre let me prefix it with that they won the overall tournament but they took a tough loss during the pool play um kid hit a game winner saw the game winner and again you guys didn't shake their hands Damn. uh gotta stop doing that i can't make that express it enough now robinson i don't know if you just said that or or coach kevin said i don't know because the only reason there's contrast is because when you guys beat matt barnes elite in the championship you had no problem shaking their hands so you got to explain that one, bro. You can't be doing that, man. You can't only want to, oh, yeah, we'll shake hands, we'll elbows, whatever, when you take an L uh, or when you uh, give L's. But when you take an L, you know, oh, it's COVID, man. We can't, we can't, we can't touch, man. It's COVID. It's COVID, bro. <laughs> like, come on, man. Be consistent, man. So I had to, I had, no. I had to call you out on that one, man, because um, someone literally sent me the video of it. Someone oh. was like, watching my, you know, like I said, there's, there's, Quite a few people in this AU community who are listening to my podcast, and they were like, "Hey, Chris, let me show you something." And they sent it damn. to me, and I was just like, "Oh, damn. being petty." Bro, I was like, "Yeah, man, being, being petty, petty Patrick's right now, man." I'm yeah. like, "You can't do that." Competition changes some people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah, it does, and I get it, man. We all want to win. Who? Nobody walks into a game or a tournament like, "All right, man, let's let's go win three right now." But you know, you got to respect your opponent, man. At least. Yeah. And don't get me wrong, there are some times where coaches do a little too much, parents say a little too much, and you don't want to shake their hands and you don't want to, you know, do the higher road. But uh, my advice is, man, um, sugar's always better uh, better than salt. So, you know, just try to try to at least portray, right, even if you don't internally feel it, try to portray that professionalism and just do the right thing because i know robinson uh, uh personally and 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 he's a good dude and, and he's a lot uh a lot better than that so lead by example yeah lead exactly by example. um well uh, getting towards the end uh i just want to give my team shout outs for the weekend um team touch uh shout out to you uh got you got you all net on that one uh also norcal ducks uh, their 17U team won at courtside, and from what I heard, they were pretty damn good. They were a pretty damn good team. Uh, Courtney, uh, looks like you're doing a good job out there in Chico. Uh, keep it up. Let me give you an all net on that one. Um, who else? Oh, uh, what, what was the Fresno team uh, you were talking about? Everybody TJ? eats. Yeah, everybody eats. Everybody eats out there in Fresno from 
what I've been told by uh, Elijah Wan and from other coaches and watching you guys play, uh, you're doing a great job. You have some tough athletes. You're uh, getting ready to go to Vegas from what TJ just told me. Um, safe travels. Uh, be safe. Uh, coach, take care of your kids. No, we've never met, but when I see good programs and I see good coaches, you know, got to give you a shout out, man. You, you do, you're doing your thing. Um, City Hot Shots again. Uh, great job on everything you're doing. Uh, I love what you're doing, Coach. Uh, I know a couple of my players are with you. Um, every time I see you, you're always very respectful. I appreciate that. Um, and, you know, for all you coaches out there, keep doing your thing. It's it's some strange times. It's, it's kind of weird looking at everything. But that's why uh, I created this platform to talk about it and to get our voices out there and get our thoughts out there and – Maybe if something sticks to you, you know, leave a comment. Uh, leave a comment on the YouTube. Uh, follow us on IG. Leave a comment on the photos. Like anything and everything uh, is is on the table. It's about that life, man. Every everything's on the table, and that's why I appreciate like TJ taking the time to come out here and and voice his truth and say his opinion. So the biggest thing uh, moving forward, uh, we well. I might. I'll let you know, but we might not be able to do uh, this coming Sunday. Uh, oh, but but that, that's a slight maybe. Okay. Slight maybe. I might have to go out of town, but uh, okay. just down to the bay. But I'll let you guys know. I'll let your brothers Vaca know. Vacation? Vacation? You gonna take your vacation? Yeah, right. Me with a vacation. <laughs> yeah, right. Vacation is going to UPS. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, no. I um. No, again, TJ. I just wanted to say thanks for coming on here, brother. Um, you know, like I said, me, me, and you have known each other quite a while, and hooped against each other, hoop with each other, <laughs> you know, yeah. watching your evolution uh, grow. We've had plenty of our uh, our coming to Jesus talks. And, <laughs> and, 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 uh, um, and, and I, it takes a lot of courage to be able to uh, put yourself on a platform like this and speak your truth and put yourself in a vulnerable position. I don't mean vulnerable like you some bitch or something like that. I'm just saying, talking about like, you're just saying, look, this is who I am. I haven't done everything perfect, but I'm trying to do better every day. So I just wanted to give you a lot of credit for that. Man. Yeah, yeah, man. Uh, I appreciate y'all having me. Uh, being able to sit on here and, and, and listen and also be able to participate as far as talking about everything, it makes it easier for people to understand, like, why you do the things that you do and why you move the way you move. And when people understand that, they might they might not like you, but they might respect it. And, and that's all that I ask from people is just respect what I do. Like, And when people talk about me, like, First thing you say say off off top is that dude is about the kids. Like that dude cares about the kids. Like you could say, oh, you know, he he might not he might not play my kid. He might not talk well about my kid as far as you know what what he thinks my kid can do or whatever. But first and foremost, just say you know he cares about the kids. And if if that's uh, somebody tell me that you said something bad about me and they said that you said that first, I don't care what I don't care what bad things you said about me because at that point I respect you because you know you know what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. Right. So. No, it's cool. Mark, any uh, closing respect. words for you, brother? No, man, just wanted to uh, say thank you for coming. Definitely respect, man, your grind, just listening to you and everything that you're doing. And, yeah, man, just just keep chasing the bigger picture, man. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate it. All right, man, well, we out of here. And uh, hopefully uh, everybody keeps enjoying the content. I, I know I get a lot of positive feedback. Every episode we try to do better. Um, we, we try to uh, keep giving you guys good things to listen to. I know people listen to this on their car rides to work. They listen to it from work. I know, so, you know, a lot of people look forward, including my mother. So shout out to my mother. She really looks forward to the YouTube tapes. And I think Ty, our camera guy, can't give him enough credit because he's out here doing a phenomenal job. Phenomenal job. Shout out to Ty. All right. And, and you know, I'm glad we got an opportunity to, to talk to a director. Um, hopefully, well, supposedly Dwayne Childs from Matt Barnes Elite wants to sit down and be on the next episode. Okay. <laughs> so that should be interesting because he's not, he's definitely not a fan of YBA. Um, but, <laughs> <laughs> but that should be a good conversation. That's my guy. That's my guy. <laughs> yeah. So that, if that happens, Hey Dwayne, uh, you're more than welcome to sit down on this couch and let's talk about things. Um, and, and I'm all good with that. Cause again, don't want to be in an echo chamber. I want people to hear, uh, our truths. I want people to have adverse opinions of myself and let's see if we can reach some common ground because like TJ said, it's about respect. It's about respect and it's about the kids. 
Um, please, again, I'm just going to reiterate again. Hit that subscribe. Hit that follow. Uh, we're on iTunes. We're on Spotify. Our Heart Radio. Pandora. Alexa. Anywhere there's a podcast, you can find us. You know what I mean? Again, one small click from you means a lot for us. Uh, also, I'm... Uh, uh, YBA is going to become a school. So anybody interested in that, hit us up. And also, if you're looking for scouting for your kid, I am the regional director for Dream Scouting. So please uh, check that out. You got Mark with uh, GGT Training. Uh, hit him up. Follow him on his IG. You got TJ with Clutch Elite Training. Hit him up for his IG. And if you need a videographer, hey. <laughs> hit up my guy Ty on his IG. And, uh, you know, everybody hopefully have a blessed day. And we out.